The Bull Simons Award, presented to those who embody the true spirit of the Special Operations Warrior. Tonight, we honor a pararescue legend who was involved in the historic rescue of the hijacked SS Maiguez and recognized as the last American to engage the enemy in Southeast Asia. His achievements include more than 415 missions in Southeast Asia, three Apollo recovery missions, and serving as director of the U.S. Air Force Enlisted Heritage Hall. He was instrumental in setting the stage for what Special Operations Combat Search and Rescue would be built upon through his involvement with the legendary Sante Raid. Chief Master Sergeant Wayne L. Fisk. The Sante Raid was a magnificent operation with an uh, equally magnificent goal. The goal was to bring back POWs, if we could find them. But nobody said anything what the mission was to be. We wouldn't be going to China, uh, Russia, North Korea. Psh, there's nothing going on in North Korea. We, uh, but no. have you thought it was going north to Hanoi? Oh, my God, nobody goes up there. My God, you're not a lunatic. <laughs> nobody in their right mind would go to, uh, of, of course, Hanoi. The call sign for Hanoi was bullseye. Nobody goes into bullseye. But some other people arrived during the night, the wee hours of the next morning. The door suddenly bangs open, the lights switch on. It was Harold W. Harvey, a magnificent pararescue man and a good boss to work for. And I ask him, where are we going? And he takes my pillow and smooths it out. And this mischievous look on his face. And he draws a little like this, and then a larger circle and a larger concentric circle. And then he jabs the first one. And all of our faces just dropped because he had drawn a bullseye. When people talk about the Sante Raid, everybody just imagines Army and Special Forces guys that went in there. And that's very unfair. Uh, it's very unfair to the people that took the risk to go in there and, and made it, were part of the success story of being able to hit the place and come out. He, he played a pivotal role uh, for, for there. He was one of the few pararescue guys that, that were uh, on, on that mission. So that, that in itself is, is one of those that's monumental. You know, you're talking a guy who's a one percenter in an organization made up of one percenters. And that's, that says something. My generation looked up to the Vietnam veterans that came before us and their stories, you know, their decorated history of valor and actions on the battlefield actually created a blueprint for what was expected of us. And little did we know that once we enter Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, and so on, that we will be playing out their successes by emulating what we learn from them. And that is the impact that somebody like Wayne Fisk has had on the pararescue community. And after Wayne was injured, he found the time to create something that will affect the enlisted force years. And this idea was the enlisted heritage hall. Wayne did that on his own time, along with the help of his wife, Angie. And that place is now the core of the preservation of our history. In the early years, we had tours that were predicated upon 100 missions. One did not go over 100 missions because on the 101 mission, the bean counters swore that you would be killed. So you had, you had to listen to the bean counters. I tried to extend. I wanted to stay there. I was having too much fun. It, it, it was my calling was to be in Southeast Asia. And uh, they said, no, Fisk, you're, you're going to work for NASA on the uh, Apollo program. This is Apollo Control Houston. The uh, capsule's riding very nicely and the swimmers are in the water. We were responsible for primarily the re-entry of the Apollo uh, space uh, uh, capsule. We would be deployed uh, onto the capsule and then install what we called the donut, a flotation device around the capsule to prevent it from uh, sinking and to stabilize it in any type of rough seas. So for 11 months, I was stuck on the rock in Bermuda. And, and, and I participated on Apollos uh, 8, 9, and 10. First, when is a patriot. 
Number two, Wayne cares about our nation. Number three, Wayne loves his family. And number four, Wayne loves every single one of us. And that has been shown throughout his life on the amount of time and effort that he committed in every single one of us. There's not a single pararescueman out there on the field today that can say that they were not impacted by Wayne Fisk. We know the quality of life, we know the flavor of life, and that's what keeps rescue people going. That's what makes them get in and, and fight and uh, go to the furthest demands of human endurance in order to save somebody in order to bring them out. For me, having a guy like Wayne consider me a friend is arguably one of the biggest medals that I wear. Um, for me, him calling me friend, knowing the kind of individual he is and the kind of individual that I saw at his prime, um, that is one of my biggest badges of honor. Wayne is the closest thing that I have had to a father, somebody that actually gave me advice, somebody that provided me with guidance, not only to be uh, a great pararescue man, but to be a great human being. And I remember the first advice that Wayne Fisk ever gave me, and he was just like, if you want to set yourself different from the pack, you need to do two things, Ray. You need to be a gentleman first and a professional second, always. You do that, you will be different than the average person out there. And it is because of the advice and the continuous involvement of Wayne Fisk, the input that he has provided me in my life, that I am the senior enlisted advisor to the chairman. So I honestly owe that to two people, and that is Janet, my wife, and Wayne Fisk. He's a game changer. You know, when you, when you look at um, things like the Sante Raid, uh, things like the Maya Guez, um, that's the kind of thing you put on recruiting posters. You know, for the, for the individual that is wired to do what we do for a living, uh, to have that kind of a role model. Uh, and, and like I said, you know, even now there's photographs of him at Herbie Field uh, and he's been retired like a hundred years, you know. Having this career field, it gave me the opportunity to flourish in pararescue, Southeast Asia, Apollo, returning to Southeast Asia, where I knew that was my calling and what I wanted to do. Eliminating the bullies in my own special way, in my own capability to perpetuate our cause of pararescue, of life-saving, of Air Force, and perpetuating the blue uniform. Because it isn't just the AFSC or MOS, it's the uniform and the uniform represents the defense of America. And the defense of America represents America and the Constitution. It has allowed me to do everything that I ever wanted to do in this life. And I cannot imagine me ever having done anything else in this life. Happy camper? Oh, you're damn right, my God. It has been absolutely marvelous.